You're listening to the FYI podcast where we talk about all things faith, life, adulting, relationships, mm-hmm. finances, theology, young adulthood, so much more. I'm Josiah Keneally. And I'm Mike Keneally. Happy Friday, everybody. We hope that you are doing well. And this podcast, especially this episode and this month is brought to you by who Josiah, some of our new friends. Our, this episode is presented by our partners at GFA World. And listen, gospel for Asia, Africa, and the world, they have an opportunity for you as a young adult. If you're sensing a call to missions on your life, you want to explore more, they have a paid apprenticeship program where you learn about prayer, God's heart for unreached people groups. It's in Texas. Again, it's a paid apprenticeship program. And they don't want money to hold you back from God's call or exploring his plan on your life, his heart for every nation and every generation. More information about GFA World is in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And also, we want to invite you May 17th through 19th to Alexandria, Minnesota for the Young Adult Weekend. Yeah. And the weekend is a great opportunity to unplug, to get away from the normal, to come and rally around other people, 18 to 30, trying to adult, try to figure out life that have deep, meaningful questions. We all have hurts, hurdles, and hangups, but this weekend is specifically designed to you to unplug, to enjoy some worship, some breakout sessions, some main sessions, and hopefully some develop some new friendships, relationships, and who knows, you might find your new best friend there. And not only will you encounter God, but you will encounter a wonderful community of about 200 50 to 300 plus young adults who are in the same season of life as you. And we want to extend that invitation. So check out youngadults.today and click on the weekend, get registered. If you have a specific roommate that you have in mind that you would like a bunk with, we would love to put you guys in the same cabin. So make sure you indicate that on your form. And we cannot wait to see you in a few short weeks at the weekend. And mm-hmm. let's kick off this mini series called Great at Work. Ooh, here we because go. Because God's heart is in, even in the creation account, mm-hmm. he created work for us to do. Ephesians, after the gospel, this honeypot in scripture, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, were saved through by grace, through faith, right. and not by our works so that none of us can boast. At the same time, God created us in Christ Jesus to do good works, which mm-hmm. he prepared in advance for us to do. So we are co-laborers in the mission right. of God. We are the people of God. We're his hands and his feet. And so, man, I would say if you're a college student, your education matters to God. If you mm-hmm. are working a job that's your dream job or a dead end job, whatever you feel like, there's purpose for your work. There's a plan yeah. for your work. And we want you to be great at work. And Mm -hmm. I thought we'd kick it off with a little bit of fun. Oh, okay. What was your first job? My very first job. You probably do. It was working for the city in a small town. Like I was like scrubbing and waxing floors and putting up tables for weddings and graduations in Washburn, North Dakota. In Washburn, North Dakota. Yeah. And painting. And yeah, I took, I cleaned the city hall and made sure all of that stuff was put up as 15 year old. And you made how much an hour? Seven dollars. Seven dollars an hour starting out. 15. The next summer it was 750. Let's go. Seven Let's dollars. Go. It's changed obviously since then. But I think that in that job, I literally worked, I, I learned stewardship, I learned grit, and I loved doing it. Why? Because mm-hmm. I don't know. Cleaning was a stress reliever for me, but also fun and satisfying. And it still totally. is, which is bizarre. Totally. Maybe some of you can relate. Totally. And those of you who can't, maybe you're the roommate that <laughs> a little bit of help. Oh, it's too funny. What was your first job? First job, Grand Slam Sports in Egan, Minnesota. Moved to Burnsville, Minnesota. All in all, I worked there from like age 14 to about 23 or 24, all through high school. Actually, before I was even in high school, it was a batting cage. Yeah. Part of the job, perks of the job was free batting cage tokens. That's why I said yes. I barely had an interview. They needed some help. They did birthday parties, laser tag, Mm -hmm. mini golf, trampoline, arcade, bumper cars, play zone, amazing place. We bring our family there now, but all in all, like I had um, an opportunity to work there and I was at age 18, asked to be one of the store managers, Justin Bieber, visited in June of 2010. I remember because it was the day I thought I was getting promoted to being a manager. And instead, instead, Justin Bieber came to the door. And his entourage, it was like- His name is still on the wall. Yep. I check every time for some reason. I have no idea why. 
Anyway. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 I learned so much at that job. And one of my favorite things is I was able to help 30, maybe 40 students mm-hmm. from the youth group at church get a job there. They all did a great job. And um, one of my best friends just bought that company. That's awesome. It's fun. And I, I thought we could kick it to First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 mm-hmm. uh, for the verse of the day. Yeah. And this says to aspire to leadership is an honorable ambition. And you do not need to be in charge to lead. It doesn't, you, you don't need a job title to lead. You don't need the corner office. You Hmm. you can be a leader in any room you walk into. I love the idea that Jesus unpacks as he came not to be served, but actually to serve. Right. And you can serve, you can lead up in any Mm -hmm. organization. You can lead through excellence. And um, before we kick it to today's question, I just thought something cool happened on the podcast I just um, got this text yesterday and from one of our listeners, his name was Ryan. This is what he said. He goes, hey, Josiah, it's Ryan. You and Micah did an episode of FYI where I had a question uh, that you unpacked about relationships while serving in the military and it aired back in December. And when it aired, I was ecstatic and grateful to hear y'all's opinion (laughs) and wisdom on the subject. Since then, I've been reading the Bible almost every day joined a Bible study, and I've been growing in my relationship with Christ. Feeling his love for me has Mm -hmm. been more than a blessing. So thank you for helping me see things through him. And babe, I don't know about you, but when I got that text, I was just like, wow, that is why we do what we do. For sure. That's why this podcast exists. So thank you for listening, for being a part of this journey, for sharing it, Mm -hmm. it, for leaving reviews. This helps the message go global, all 50 states, more than 60 countries. Right. And we don't know all the names. We don't know all the stories, but thanks for being a part of this podcast. Yeah, I love that. And we loved unpacking that question that Ryan um, sent us as well. But Josiah, today's question is, where are all the great leaders? This is a question I think you were asking on a family (laughs) vacation trip back in North Dakota, probably back in 2018 and 19. Mm -hmm. You were just sitting there on the couch all of a sudden, you're like, where are all the great leaders? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just out of nowhere, Josiah had this, deep question. And I don't know if it was causing reflection of your own leadership or the leadership that you've been under or a true question of where are all the good leaders and there are great leaders, mm-hmm. but how do we go from good to great, you know, and in those elements as well. So do you want to take first step the question here or what do you want to unpack? Oh my gosh. I would say that I have lost track how many leaders I've served under. Mm-hmm. I've had only a handful of jobs for the most part, I've had extraordinary experiences working for leaders, but has there been some situations that was maybe some toxic leadership? Sure. Absolutely. Um, but by far and by large, I've had incredible leaders that I've had the opportunity to come alongside to serve their vision. And I would just say that, you know, I had this, um, conversation and interaction where somebody asked me what, what I did. And he found out about our nonprofit, Young Adults Today. And he's like, oh, wow, I can't think of a better boss to work for. Hmm, That's great. And he was talking about God. Right. And I had that epiphany or that aha moment that you could have the most incredible, faithful, servant-minded leader Mm -hmm. that you're working for. Great. You work as though you're working in the Lord. You could have the bossiest, most micromanagey. I mean, is it okay to say on this podcast, jerk? Somebody who is just um, maybe egocentric, maybe they're in it for themselves, narcissistic tendencies, all mm-hmm. those things. And you could actually, mm-hmm. if there's abuse, get out for sure. And maybe God's calling you up or out, but you could also have the worst leader ever here on earth you're actually not reporting to them, right? You're doing it for the Lord. Right. And I mean, I'd be curious, you've worked under some great leaders. Talk about one of the great leaders who, who have you served with that stands out as a great leader? What was it about their leadership that made them great? Oh work? man. I think there's two great leaders that I've served, served under. Well, I'll talk about one older and one, literally one year older than me and probably pretty young to be taking over some mm. elements of leadership. 
And I think the first one would be the lead pastor of Evangel Assemblies of God back in Bismarck, North Dakota at the time was uh, Doug Graham, Pastor Doug Graham. And he is and was an incredible leader. Like he still is an incredible leader here in the cities now. But I would say he is definitely an individual who is a shepherd hearted leader yeah, and definitely a pastor, meaning that a shepherd washes the feet of their servants. A shepherd takes the sheep where they're going because there's vision, there's dreams, there's ambition. And he was able to cast vision as well as lead a healthy flock. Meaning like one of his rules literally was if I find out that any of you are gossiping or backstabbing or backbiting or there's anything being said behind the scenes, don't, don't bother showing up tomorrow. Because that's a form of toxicity. That's a form of poison in the water hole. And we're here to further God's kingdom, not stroke our our own egos, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a, I'm a very, I don't know, blunt communicator, I think for the most part of like, I'm most of the time, like I say what I mean and I mean what I say. I'm like, hey, that's awesome. Like, I'm so glad he was that bold and direct in those staff meetings. And at the time I was um, an intern and then I was on staff after that. But I would say like, when you have a, vision casting leader, like, you know, that you're going places and under his leadership, he wanted everybody's skill sets that God had given them to come alive. It's not just Mike could go plug a hole in the bottom of the boat. So we don't sink. It was, what are your skill sets? What are your passions? What are your desires? And one of my passions and desires that actually got me into the role and position was young adult ministry. It was a passion to see the 18 to 30 year old have a place in the church to know that they are welcome, that they are seen, that they are I don't know, just invited into yeah. the church body at yeah. large. When you're single, you're 23, mm-hmm. trying to figure out life and you're not in a relationship, you don't have kids, you're not in marriage, you're kind of in that weird space. And that space can last up to 12 years, you know, and not really knowing where am I going and what am I doing? So the leader that he actually hired was uh pastor josh shaldahl and he's only one year older than me and it turns out that he became my young adult pastor and leader and i was his assistant and we had a whole thing going but i mean with him he i would say is a leader that led very spirit fit like very spirit led Mm -hmm. but also wore his heart on his sleeve Mm -hmm. so sometimes that can be friend or foe but for him it was definitely a passion that he had um, to reach young adults because he saw where they were going. He saw the world and the directions and the options of anywhere, but church they could choose. Right. So I think to see his leadership grow and expand in a sense, when Doug um, had moved, there was like a position open as lead pastor. I remember Josh saying, I have no desire at each 29 or 28 to run for lead pastor. So if they would ask me to exit, like I'm fine with whatever God has. So he had no, mm-hmm. no desire at that moment to put his yeah. hat in the running. Yeah. And he said, God, whatever you have, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And the board said, Josh, I think that you are the next lead pastor. And he's, yep. I think he took over. He's 28, 29 years old mm-hmm. as a lead pastor. I'd probably say, maybe this is me speaking on a turn. I think it's one of the largest in the AG in oh, for sure. North, North Dakota. For sure. In, in the and entire it, country. It's growing, yeah. but to take on building projects, to take on million dollar projects to get people in the doors mm-hmm. so they could hear the gospel because they were bursting at the seams after he had taken over. So I would just say those are two healthy leaders that I've been under that would call me out and call me up in greatness. And even when I didn't see things in myself, um, they would encourage that and try to fan into flame like Micah, it's there. Just don't let it burn out. So I would say they challenged me as a leader on so many different levels in good ways. And yeah. And I say, even for Pastor Doug, I'll go back to that. Uh, For the young adult who maybe feel like you're burning out. I was under leadership that knew what burnout was and never wanted to see anybody be there. It's good. So I think a good leader and a good boss and a good pastor, whoever you're serving with or under alongside will know and recognize warning signs for you personally, if you can't recognize them yourself, but also encourage you to take that vacation and encourage you to take that sabbatical, encourage you to take that weekend and breathe, you know, so honoring the Sabbath in the midst of serving the church, I think is essential for me. So there's a quote that you shared a couple of weekends ago at our leadership conference. And I believe it came from Lisa Turkers that went something like um, a lot of us have overwhelmed calendars. So our, our soul is underwhelmed with God. 
Yes, we have an well, underwhelmed soul with God. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and to flip that, maybe we need to clear out some of the work if we're overworking or over scheduling or extracurriculars mm-hmm. yeah. to the point where maybe our schedule needs to feel underwhelming so we can get overwhelmed with God. Um, because at the end of the day, you can be a workaholic and it's one of the sins that is probably celebrated in our culture in America, in the American in, yeah. in, in the Western world. Yeah. It's like the people that instead of aspiring to the first Timothy three kind of leadership that's service right. and making a difference. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think we aspire to unrelenting and unrealistic standards that are set by comparison or looking to, mm-hmm. to climb the ladder right. in corporate America or to be noticed or celebrated or applauded and there's so while we're talking about work in this series what I don't want us to do is aim at overworking Mm -hmm. and become all consumed with work that we become human doings rather than human beings And, and anytime we tip that scale in that direction um, that's a dangerous slippery slope because there is burnout. There's also consequences for our bodies, our minds, our yep. spirit, our soul. And right. I remember um, getting hired in a ministry after those years at Grand Slam. Mm-hmm. I worked for an amazing leader, Jerry Stranquist. He hired me at Cedar Valley Church. Mm-hmm. And just about every week he would come to my office. Here's the the big tuna, we call them. Here's the head honcho, the the CEO or the president or the the leader of the organization chart of a large staff Mm -hmm. of a large church, a couple thousand people there most weekends. And he he would come to my office with Twizzlers. Mm -hmm. And he would say, is there anything I can do for you? what do you need? Do you have everything for your job that you need to succeed? Do you have all the tools? Do you have the equipment? Is there anything that I can do to make your job easier? And I mean, that is the kind of, because I was really there to serve at his pleasure. But at the end of the day, he took that script, just like Jesus did, flipped it on its head. And he came down to say, Hey, you're the youngest pastor here. You're the newest one. How can I serve you? And I'll never forget the difference that made in his life. Most years, I've made the pilgrimage out to Arizona to visit him, Mm -hmm. to see him, to stay there and to to learn about God and and leadership from him. Well, I think that's a demonstration. If you're looking for a good book to read, it's Servant Leadership is a great book. It's a small book, but it's a good one that we actually read during pastoral Mm -hmm. studying and going to school for that. But I think not many people can say, I went on vacation and stayed at my ex-boss's house or my ex or like my whatever pastor's house or whatever and I think when you develop relationships and friendships in that realm um some of them outlast your role and I think that leaving people in places better than we found them transitioning well um blessing and sending are all things that we get to do whether you're in the marketplace or in the church I mean they have probably different terms I don't want to sound Christianese when I say that but there's definitely a, a sending and a going and a you're the newcomer on staff and all that kind of stuff oh my gosh and one of the things that will help you stand out in the marketplace in any role whether you are the leader or you're the employee when you treat people with a type of dignity respect Mm -hmm. and to treat them as a person not as managing tasks but when you treat them like the person that god created them to be it's it's like bob goff says He says, treat everyone as if they had a sticker or a name tag that said, I'm special. Mm. If you can help people feel special, you will stand out. There's not a a place or a role that you can't have. And I look at to the world for a second to answer, where are all the great leaders? What I would study is Mm Chick-fil-A. What I would study is the Ritz-Carlton, Hobby Lobby, Disney. When you go to any of those four places, it's a little bit different than if I said Burger King Mm -hmm. or Target or Walmart or Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, I think the first four that you mentioned from Chick-fil-A, Ritz Carlson, Hobby Lobby and Disney, I think some of those are faith-based, number one. I think Mm -hmm. the other thing is they studied leadership. They've studied strategic leadership and 
the customer is the one paying for the service, the experience. I think we value experiences and service hand in hand these days. To say my pleasure. Yeah, from my pleasure to getting every single door. I remember like we had the opportunity to go somewhere to the Everett's Carlton. Yeah. And we had the opportunity to travel. That's not generally, generally where we stay, but we had an opportunity. And I was like, I got my bags. Like, no, 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 I got the bags. I'm like, where do you want me to park the car? Like, no, 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 you don't park your car. I'm like, well, what, what do you want me to do? Here are my keys? You know, so it's like, I'm not used to that because I'm just not used to that. It's not how it was raised. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you're looking for a service, if you're looking for those things, I think they make you feel seen the moment you walk in the door. They recognize that you are you're paying to stay here. Here's your water. We'll take your keys. What room are you? We'll take your bags up here. You want a refill at Chick-fil-A? Here's your refill. So I think even they see people as people or they train people to see people as people versus seeing as just a dollar bill walking in or out of the door. Now, okay. are they making money off of us? Yes, absolutely. For sure. But I even look at Hobby Lobby. They honor Sabbath. They are closed every single Sunday as well as Chick-fil-A. Right. And they are some of the two top businesses who in the past have been very successful in productivity yeah. or the yeah. production of things and services as well as customers, I guess, more or less. But a story from our life, um, the past couple of years, we go to the Home Depot the first Saturday of the month and we missed a couple of months. It was your birthday and then we were traveling mm -hmm. and they got really busy in the process. But there's a gal who leads those projects that it's kids crafts. And, mm -hmm. and she noticed that the girls hadn't been there. So she saved two or three months. Four worth, months. Okay. Four months worth of projects. She had them in a bag and she handed them to the girls and mm -hmm. she said, I've missed you guys. Mm -hmm. And what that did, a great way to care for me is to care for my kids. Right. And Andy Stanley, one of our favorite leadership teachers says, do for one, what you wish mm -hmm. you could do for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that gal at Home Depot, I don't think my hunch is she's not there for the paycheck. She's not there just for the money to collect a check, to pay the bills. She's there to make smiles. Yeah. She's there to make days. She could work <laughs> somewhere else and arguably make yeah. more money. But for her, that's what it's about. And my challenge, hmm. our challenge for you as the listener, maybe you're watching on YouTube. What if this week, what if in your workplace, what if at your job, mm -hmm. what if at school, if you're a student, what if you brought Disney level, I mean, Disney quality, excellence and service and greatness in everything you say or you do in the workplace. And what I'm not talking about is perfection, but what I am talking about is bringing your best mm -hmm. and just treating people the way that, well, Matthew 7, 12, the golden rule, treat others as you would want to be treated. What if that was our challenge? What would our workplaces, our neighborhoods, our community, our world look like this week? if we made that type of a difference. Mm -hmm. and, you, and even if you're not serving under a leader like that, I would say if you were the leader, what would you change and how would you behave and how would you treat people? Because what we didn't unpack in this episode is what makes a great leader? What makes a good leader? What makes somebody followable in the process of unpacking and discovering your time, talents and treasures as an individual in the marketplace, in ministry, whatever that may look like. So Something to ponder, something to think about. We want to hear your thoughts. Send us a comment here on YouTube. Be sure to share this episode if you found it helpful. Mm. And we'll see you back next Friday on the FYI podcast.